This was the last ever Nintendo official magazine produced before they had to rebrand themselves. I guess they had to rebrand themselves to the Wii, but I like this cover, uh, the artistic style of Mario and Luigi, Partners in Time. This guy, I always thought this was funny, this guy uh, going through the ceiling. So yeah, let's open it up and see what we have here. Uh, that's him saying game over, last issue. I think that was the very first Nintendo magazine ever. That was uh, Goldeneye, as I recall. It's sort of a wee bit of a different layout than the other magazine. They go into Mario and Luigi Lost in Time. Back in the day, you couldn't subscribe online in those days. I think you had to write into them. Bit of a cleaner layout, this magazine. It's funny here because it cancelled cameos. Uh, that was one of their mascots, the block. They had quite a few of them. Then they had Tingle and Barlow from Coronation Street. Oh dear, dear, dear. Oh yeah, you can get a rumble pack if anyone's into that sort of thing. It's weird because like rumble was all the range back in the day and now like you don't, you don't really get rumble on anything. Like there's few games that support it now. Even though like controllers all come with rumble. This was more hype for the Wii, which I was suckered into a different colored text. There's more games coming out, Sam Fisher game. It's a beautiful painting of Final Fantasy Tactics. Keep this issue away from harm, it'll be worth a lot on eBay one day. Well, somehow I doubt it, but whatever. I'm still waiting for that day. <laughs> Probably when I'm an old man. There's Reggie fils back in his younger days. He doesn't actually look too much different, shockingly. I'll take you all on, come on, I can have no problems. Who's up for you, bunch of pussies? Mario Kart takes first in Japan, so it's uh, Mario Kart DS. That was a brilliant picture there of uh, Resident Evil 4, though. Unfortunately, I was a bit too young at the time to be playing that game. There's club sales, so the poor guy's looking for a new job. He's eventually cut, circled zookeeper, looking for free attractive female seals. The right kind of has to feed Beav and stroke seals regularly. So there's things that are big in Japan. And let's take a wee look here. For some reason they have a bunch of original Famicoms all lined up. There's a Final Fantasy micro. That looks pretty cool. There's the Hot Mario Bros, they're quite funny. <laughs> Not sure why they call themselves the Hot Mario Bros, but anyway. This is more big in Japan. This is before the internet. There's, there's more obscure Jap Japanese games that we probably didn't get over here. There's Chibi Robo. I remember the hype behind this one. Everyone wanted Chibi Robo. I don't think the I don't think it came over here though. There's Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll and a lot of nice looking screenshots of that. That was a fun wee game. Uh, good multiplayer. Animal Crossing Wild World, another classic. Goes into depth like that. Final Fantasy Advance, and then we have One Piece Pirates Carnival. It got 80%. Obviously, it would have got rated a lot lower because, let's face it, I don't think there is any good One Piece games ever released. Every time I see reviews of them, they're always terrible. We have Bleach. I don't think we got this one over here. Uh, Rainbow Islands Revolution. That looks like Bubble Bobble to me. It's the games of 2005, and they're not quite as biased as um, other Nintendo publications. They're not like mostly Nintendo exclusive, like you do have the two thrones there, uh, Prince of Persia. You have Resident Evil 4. I find it hard to disagree with their list. That's interesting, they have two guys who are apparently dead writing. <laughs> There's Mario Party 7. There was four Mario Party games released on the GameCube alone, oddly. I, I do remember playing this one. My friend had this game and we played multiplayer on it. It was fun. This apparently is two Castlevania games uh, on the Game Boy Advance. So. Can't seem to go wrong with Castlevania. There's Prince of Persia. Advance Wars meets Fire Emblem in Persia with a smattering of Yu-Gi-Oh! But it didn't do enough to warrant a good review. There's the TV license games. Of course, they're very average. Namco 50th Anniversary. Touch Golf. I remember how that game, that game wasn't bad. The Dragon Ball Z one. That was a fun wee title. The Dynasty Warriors. Didn't get great reviews. Beautiful Joe. I love the Beautiful Joe game on the GameCube, the first one. 
I haven't played any of the other ones. Oh god, Crazy Frog Racer. <laughs> I think my brother, my younger brother had that one. It was awful. Bing, 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 bing. I still remember when that was popular in school. The, I say the the Yobs always had it on their phone. Mostly though, a few normal people had them on their phones as well. Mario World Twisted, brilliant game. The only complaint they really had was the cutscenes eat too much into the mini game space, and they're dull. So yeah, these are a bunch of bad games. Peter Jackson's King Kong. They're pretty much mostly movie licensed games. With Mario's World, so who gives you tips of Mario Kart? These were quite. I remember how useful these were because I didn't have the internet back. In 2005, believe it or not, so then why was cheat? This is a funny, <laughs> I always find this one funny. Ask the block. This is the last time you'll see that slightly scary smile. Block, I think you're a very helpful, kind, considerate, attractive, in a square type fashion, funny, well spoken, and have many other qualities that I'm probably not even aware of. Will you please marry me and bear my blocky children? <laughs> By it. Uh, Helen Ball in Mansfield. Uh, Helen, if you're watching this, uh, let me know how that went. Now listen here, Helen. I'm up for a spot of block-based loving, but you must be one serious misguided individual if you think I'm going to marry you. I couldn't have any children anyway. I clearly have no genitalia. Seek professional help, you freak. <laughs> I guess it was before Nintendo adopted their family-friendly approach. Yeah, so they have this kind of humor splattered throughout the magazines. I do miss it. So they, <laughs> so yeah, they have the, the mail. It's a bit sad the way this magazine went out. The art was very good. This was a brilliant magazine. I wouldn't go out buying a whole bunch of them, but if you find one for quite cheap, pick it up and just, it's a piece of history. Uh, this is the last ever issue I have and one day it's apparently going to get valuable, so I'll be holding on to it. So yeah guys, that was my experiences of the Nintendo official magazine. Uh, next time I will be covering the official Nintendo magazine, which was the successor. and. I have quite a lot of issues of those, unlike the Nintendo official magazine where I only have two. So let me know what's your experiences of this magazine and until next time, 